the nucleotide excision repair mechanism is again an amazing repair mechanism that is observed in species across uh, right from prokaryotes to humans um, what is important and what is interesting to note is that nucleotide excision repair has a very broad substrate uh, range that means it can uh, address um, all adducts that uh, are distorting the dna helix as well as adducts adducts that do not distort the dna helix uh, it is a highly conserved mechanism although the molecules that may be present in different uh, systems may vary but the overall mechanism is highly conserved uh, in this section uh, the focus is going to be on the prokaryotic nucleotide excision repair uh, where uh, the molecules involved in the process are going to be discussed and the overall mechan mechanism is going to be understood so let us look at what are the learning outcomes of this session you would definitely get an insight into the various components of the nucleotide excision repair mechanism in prokaryotes the mechanism identifies damaged nucleotide or lesion it not just identifies it it verifies the damage and then marks it for repair uh, the NER mechanism removes several nucleotides that is it removes even the normal nucleotides along with the damaged nucleotide and then replaces it with a set of new nucleotides ensuring that uh, the correct nucleotides are being added now uh, it is very important that they uh, that the, to differentiate from base excision repair they have named this process as nucleotide excision repair the base excision repair also uh, is responsible for removing uh, uh, lesion but it only uh, removes those that are um, not distorting the dna but what is important is that in base excision repair the first step involves removal of the base and then removal of the phosphate sugar moiety whereas in case of the nucleotide excision repair it is the entire nucleotide along with the uh, lesion base is removed at one uh, uh, stretch itself so therefore uh, to differentiate between the two uh, basically depending on the mechanism this mechanism is called as the nucleotide excision repair it is a very highly coordinated multi-step process with an interplay of dna protein and protein protein interactions what is important to note is again the teamwork of the molecules involved in the process uh, and how this teamwork allows it to uh, minimize the uh, mutability or the mutations in the uh, cells in fact uh, uh, this is one of the major um, mechanisms that is contributing to genomic stability now let us look at which are the key players of the mechanism well you have uvra uvrb uvrc and the uvrd now these Key molecules are named as UVR because uh, when they were discovered, they were found to be associated with uh, the damages that have happened because of exposure to UV radiation, and therefore the the naming of the molecules were as UVR because uh, they were found to be associated with repairing damages caused due to the UV radiations. Of course, one has the DNA polymerase and the DNA ligase because this mechanism involves removal of nucleotides and replacing it with new nucleotides. So therefore, there is where DNA polymerase and the DNA ligase come into play. Now, let us look at the overview of the uh, nucleotide excision repair. Uh, the steps are very discrete steps. They happen as a cascade. And so it is interesting to note that the NER first uh, looks at detecting the damage and verifying whether it is really a damage. Having done so, there is uh, incision at that uh, just uh, around the, uh, the damage and then that uh, region is excised out. Having removed that entire region, uh, the DNA is now synthesized and ligated. So to get finally a normal DNA. Having removed the abnormal uh, base lesion or abnormal lesion that is present. 
Now, interestingly, the NER is found to be recruited uh, by a, any damage that is happening across the entire genome. So, it is able to detect uh, damages that are present in the entire genome. But what is also observed is that NER per se can be recruited when a damage is detected by the RNA polymerase during transcription. So, this is something that is observed. Anyhow, it is basically a damage that is removed, uh, which is present in the DNA per se. But this is something that is interesting, that it is able to be rec uh, recruited uh, to uh, look at the damage uh, genome-wide and also to look at the damage uh, when the transcription is uh, being carried out. So, the NER, NER interesting point again is here that the NER is able to detect a very broad spectrum of DNA lesions uh, which occur due to a result of several different environmental factors including the damage that is caused by the UV radiation. So, uh, in many bacteria apart from the photoreactivation uh, through which uh, the thymidin dimers or the pyrimidin dimers uh, are removed, uh, the NER is also responsible for uh, addressing the cyclobutin pyrimidin rings formed due to UV radiation and also the four six uh, um, adducts that are formed because of UV radiation. So therefore, uh, it is taking care of that apart from uh, lesions that are caused because of oxidation, say for example, the formation of OxoG or say for example, incorporation of a base analog. So there are myriad number of uh, um, lesions that can be detected by the NER. So you must understand that NER complements all the other repair systems to ensure that genomic stability is maintained. Of course, it is the UVRABC complex that coordinates the initiation of the repa repair mechanism and what has been observed through various studies is that it is highly dynamic in its action and yet uh, despite understanding a lot about the structure of these individual components one is not very clear about the mechanism there are several proposals but uh, yet uh, the fine details of the mechanism is yet to be understood now let us basically go to uh, NER, DNA damage recognition by the UVRA molecule. So, uh, when you look at, uh, and of course, UVRA interacts with the DNA. This is something that is important. If it does not have domains that can interact with the DNA, its uh, role in the damage, DNA damage recognition does not happen. So, this is the first of the four UVR molecules that is involved in the NER uh, mechanism. And uh, the UVRA per se is present as a dimer and it belongs to the ABC, that is the anti, uh, sorry, the ATP binding cassette superfamily of ATPases. You can note in the uh, monomer uh, structure that there are several domains that are present in the monomer itself. And there are at the N-terminal domain as well as at the C-terminal domain, both domains have the nucleotide binding domain where you can have the ATP binding. So, the, this domain is where the ATP can bind. Also, this domain is where you can have the ATP bind. So, every UVRA can bind to two molecules of ATP and when it is present as a dimer, it can bind to four molecules of ATP. So you can already see uh, that uh, it uses energy or it uses the interplay of ATP binding and its hydrolysis to regulate uh, the entire, uh, to regulate the process of, uh, you know, detecting or recognizing or sensing the DNA damage. Uh, one is also observing that there is a, domain that is able to bind to UVRB, which is the next molecule of the NER mechanism. So when you look at two monomers, okay, you will find that this monomer has its UVR binding domain, uh, UVRB binding domain over here. And for this monomer, as it is placed, the UVRB binding domain is here. So when you look at the final structure of the UVRA2, one says A2 because there are two monomers, 
and UVRB2 because there are two UVRBs that are going to bind, one at this end and the other at this end. Typically because the binding domain of this monomer lies over here and the binding domain of this monomer lies over here. So eventually you will have UVRA present over here flanked by the UVRB because of the presence of the binding domains for UVRB. What is also interesting to note is that there are two signature domains of the UVRA and these signature domains have typical amino acid motifs which conform to the ABC superfamily. So therefore these signature domains have structures which are related to the ABC superfamily of the ATPases. So that is kind of a um, you know, a seal on the fact that it belongs to the AP, ABC superfamily of ATPases. Uh, there are associated three zinc ions in the form of zinc fingers. So the protein, the, both the monomers are associated with three uh, zinc fingers, of which zinc finger one and two are mainly having structural implications on the uh, monomer itself, while the third zinc finger or the third zinc ion is reported to be associating with the DNA. So the interaction of UVRA with the DNA is said to be because of the presence of the zinc finger in the protein. So this is another interesting facet of the UVRA. Now it has what is called as an insertion domain and what is observed is that this insertion domain is very highly um, flexible. So therefore as the DNA binds to the um, two monomers, that is the UVRA2, what is observed is because the insertion domain is flexible, there is a rearrangement of conformation of the UVRA2 to accommodate the um, DNA. Interestingly, what is observed is that when the two monomers come together, there is a cleft that is formed. And observantly, it is through the insertion domain that the DNA enters this cleft. What is also very interesting is that when uh, the DNA enters this cleft, uh, the um, UVRA to itself on interacting with the DNA uh, can uh, form several conformations wherein it can close in onto the DNA and yet it has a flexibility enough to open up if it encounters a DNA. Uh, lesion. So if the structure, so basically the UVRA is trying to, so effectively uh, the UVRA through its signature domains, especially the signature 2, uh, binds to a few nucleotides away from the base lesion. So this interacts strongly with the DNA as soon as it encounters a DNA lesion. So how does it know that there is a DNA lesion? Well, it looks for whether the DNA is bent at that position or it is slightly open at that position or it is uh, having a, uh, not a very strong hydrogen bonding between the base pair. So, there are so that mechanism is not really very clear. But what is, what is, what is uh, reported by several studies is that the signature 2 region holds on to the DNA a few nucleotides away from the DNA lesion so that the other part of the UVRA2 is able to study the DNA structural mobility. So looking at the DNA structural mobility, whether uh, it is able to find that the mobility at the lesion region is different from the other regions, it is able to kind of sense that there is a DNA damage over there. Uh, please note, what is very interesting is that uh, the UVRA2 only differs in its binding affinity to a DNA lesion by 2 to 5 times, not much. That means it can bind to an undamaged DNA with good affinity, but when it comes to binding to a damaged DNA part, the affinity increases just by 2 to 5 folds, not much. However, it does so and therefore it is attributed that it is UVRA that is responsible for sensing the DNA damage. So the first molecule of the NER is basically involved in recognizing the DNA damage. And because it has the ATP molecules, uh, 
there is there are reports saying that the binding of the atp and then its hydrolysis enables the uvra with the uvrb to scan the dna for uh, dna damages now let us move to the second molecule which is the uvrb and the uvrb is seemingly verifying the damage that has been recognized by the uvra so the uvrb has again a very typical structure with several defined domains so it has domain 1a 1b 2 3 4 these are distinctively present uh, so this domain 1b of the uvrb is observed to interact with the dna and the domain 2 interacts with the uvra so that is how you have the uvrb binding to the uvra you already seen that uvra has a uvrb binding domain so similarly uvrb has a uvra binding domain the um, domain 1a and the beta hairpin this typically is a beta hairpin that is present and these two have been uh, responsible for its interaction that is uvrb's interaction with the dna when what has been reported is through various studies is that the uh, beta hairpin uh, which attributes the uvrb with a weak helicase activity okay and okay please also note that uvrb also has an atpase activity so it also has structural motifs that uh, suggest it to be part of the abc superfamily again so this also has an inherent atpase activity and uh, what is very important is that there are several studies that suggest that when the uvra hovers around a dna damage which it uh, feels that is a dna damage the uvrb due to the uvra dna association is able to basically change its conformation so that it tries to flip out the base into a hydrophobic pocket that is present in uvrb if the base flips out then that is an indication that it is the damage so that is a verification that is a kind of verification or what has been observed is that uh, because of uh, the stacking of the amino acids of the uvrb into the uh, region where there is a dna lesion uh, the weak a helicase activity of the uvrb is able to open up the dna slightly at that region so uh, therefore by means of both the beta hairpin and the domain 1a uh, the understanding is that there is there could be a flipping model or what could happen is that there could be locking of the dna lesion region behind the beta hairpin so these two models are prevalent so one is that because it is able to flip out the base it is verifying the damage the second is that it is able to lock in to the dna damage position and thereby verifying that that definitely is the damage yet a lot needs to be done to find out what is really the fine or what are the fine uh, molecular arrangements that happen when uh, the uvrb2 helps in verifying the damage just understanding one other thing as the domain 3 and domain 4 are observantly helping in interacting with the uvrc and that is one reason why uh, uvrb is considered to be a central key molecule in the uh, ner pathway because it is able to bind to the first molecule which is uvra it is able to bind to the dna and it is also able to bind to uvrc which is the next molecule in the ner pathway so it holds a central position in the entire mechanism the domain 4 is an interesting domain it is considered to be an auto inhibitory domain for the atpase activity in other words that uvrb when it is alone that is stand alone it is not bound to the uvra dna complex then it is this domain 4 that inhibits its atpase activity so uvrb alone is inactive with respect to its um, atpase activity however when uvrb binds to uvra dna complex immediately 
the auto inhibitory uh, domain changes its conformation in lieu of which immediately UVRB will have a active ATPase. So that 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 is something that is extremely important. One is one has been able to uh, you know study. Uh, there are several studies that have showed that if this auto inhibitory domain is completely cleaved off from the UVRB, it has its ATPase activity working. The moment the auto inhibitory domain is restructured in the uh, protein, uh, it shows that the ATPase activity is diminished. So this is something that is very, very interesting. Now let us just look at and understand uh, what it is doing as a complex. So it effectively is working as a pre-incision complex. Now let us look at how it comes to this pre-incision complex. So consider that you have the DNA with the lesion, okay? And what happens is that the UVR A2, B2 complex, so UVR A2, UVR B2 complex binds to the DNA, normal regions of the DNA because it is found that UVR A2 can close in onto the, into normal DNA. Uh, through the cleft, it, the DNA can pass through. So the UVR A to B2 scans the DNA for damages and when it reaches the damage, okay, what happens is that because of the UVR B2 coming close to each other, this is a report that has suggested that when it reaches the base lesion, it comes close to each other and because of this conformational change, two things happen. One, its affinity to bind to the UVR A DNA complex reduces and also because it comes closer, the UVR A interaction with DNA decreases and the UVR A2 is released. But of course, what its work was has been completed. It had to recognize the or sense the DNA damage, which it did, and it facilitates the UVRB to further work on the DNA damage. So the verification of the DNA damage is done by UVR2. What has been studied is that UVR A is able to facilitate wrapping of the DNA around the UVRB2. And this is interesting because uh, with the UVRB2 uh, wrapped around the DNA, uh, sorry, uh, the DNA wrapping around the UVRB2 and due to the UVRB2 having helicase activity, it is observed that uh, the UVRB is able to open up the DNA a little further around the damage. So you would have the damage here, but the bubble has been formed carrying the damage. So it, in fact, what it has therefore done is that it has, it has verified that there is a damage and it has opened up this region for further repair. So this that is formed is what is called as a pre-incision complex. Let's just look at again the fact so this is where, so this is what we, uh, we were looking at, that the damage is within the open region. And this opening up of the uh, region, which has the base lesion, is because of the helicase activity of the um, UVRB. So due to innumerable possible conformational changes of UVR, A, B complex, they are able to not just recognize different non-helix addex and helix distortion, but they are also able to lock onto it, verifying the lesion. You can see that UVRB is not moving forward anymore. It is locked onto this region. The ATP binding and hydrolysis, since both UVRA and B have our ABC super belong to the ABC super family, ATP binding and its hydrolysis is in an inherent property. And that seems to be helping in scanning the DNA and opening of the DNA at the lesion. So it has a role to play, but more is needed to understand as to how it is happening. Let us now move on to the next molecule, which is the UVRC. As observed earlier, UVRB is the one that is going to enable binding to UVRC. And this UVRC is responsible for incision. So we said that uh, we looked at the fact that the UVRB is forming the pre-incision complex. That means it is making the 
damaged region uh, ready for incision, but the real incision is being carried out by UVRC. So, this UVRC is basically an endonuclease. That means a molecule that can uh, cleave or, or cut a phosphodiester bond within the DNA. However, where within the DNA? It is that is decided by UVRB. So, let us look at the structural uh, components of the UVRC. So, the UVRC has typically two endonuclease domains and it can bind to the C-terminal domain of the UVRB. You can see that it has a domain that can typically bind to the C-terminal domain of UVRB. So, UVRC will have to have a domain that can bind to UVRB. Thereafter, only when it binds to the UVRB, it becomes an active endonuclease. If you have a standalone UVRC, it will be an inactive endonuclease. And this is definitely something that is required. Because if UVRC stand alone were an endonuclease, it would go and cut anywhere in the DNA, which is not what is required. So it will cut only at a region where there is UVRB. So when it binds to UVRB, it gets activated as an endonuclease and makes the incisions. Interestingly, what is observed is that because it has to cut the DNA, it has to bind to the DNA as well. And so there is a domain which is called as the HHH helix domain, okay, enables the UVRC to interact with the DNA. So it has a DNA binding domain as well. Now let us look at uh, how UVRC works. So what is observed is when you have the pre-incision complex formed, and because of the conformational changes, the binding domain for UVRC in the um, UVRB opens up. UVRC is recruited. So the UVRC comes and binds. And when this UVRC binds to the UVRB2 complex, it again shows a conformational change. And some reports are suggesting that as soon as the UVRC comes and binds, uh, there is uh, inclination of the UVRC remaining bound to the UVRB2 which is closer to the damage so on the strand that has the damage while the other UVRB2 is removed so it goes away but look at the fact that now the UVRC is bound to the DNA which has the damage so this was the damage so this is very important now also note that part of the UVRC is bound to the double helical region. So this is needed. So the HHH2 domain is able to bind to the double stranded DNA and this is required for incision. That is the endonuclease activity. So what is observed is that with this you have the uh, UVRC first carrying out an incision at the three prime end of the damage okay and uh, uh, by and the, if the damage is here the cut is four to five phosphodiester bonds away so it is a little away from the damaged dna so the damaged uh, lesion is here but the cut is made about four to five nucleotides away uh, and the other incision so it makes two incision Please remember it has two endonuclease domains. So there are two cuts that are possible by the UVRC and it makes the two cuts. So one is at the three prime end of the damage and the other is at the five prime end of the damage. So it can enable two cuts to be made on this DNA which is carrying the lesion. Now with uh, several studies what has been observed that there is another molecule called the CHO endonucleases that are present in several prokaryotes. So this CHO endonuclease seems to be a backup in many prokaryotes and it is also observed that it is a UVRC homologue. But what is very clearly observed is that this CHO endonuclease cuts even farther from the place where the UVRC can cut. So it binds about four more base pairs away. So the cut is about a little farther away from the base lesion. Never, uh, nevertheless, it is observed to be present in main, many prokaryotes 
and it can carry out. So it is considered to be a part of the NER pathway and it can carry out incision at the pre prime end of the base lesion. So therefore, what is important to note is that UVRC in this way has been able to carry out an incision. That is the importance of UVRC endonuclease. Now, therefore, we can see that stepwise, the UVR-ABC complex has enabled first recognition of the damage, then verification of the damage, and then incision on the strand that has the damage. Now, let us look at what happens next. So, what will happen next is the process of excision, then the, the uh, gap filling and the seeding. So, let us again look at the fact that say this is the DNA with the damage over here and you have the UVRB and the UVRC uh, bound which is able to carry out incisions on both sides. So, at the 3 prime end of the DNA lesion and also at the 5 prime end of the DNA lesion. So, when that happens, the next molecule to come in is a molecule that is called as UVRD and UVRD is a helicase and it is a strong helicase plus it has uh, affinity to bind to ATP that means it has an ATP binding domain and it has a strong ATPase activity as well. So using the energy of ATP it is able to now act as a helicase. So what is observed is that the helicase will come and bind to the 3 prime end of the uh, DNA lesion and it will st start to move in the 3 prime 5 prime uh, direction and in the process therefore what it does is the strand that was incised from both ends that strand is completely remo removed how it is removed by unwinding so the hydrogen bonds that this strand were forming with the with this strand is removed because of the helicase activity we all know that helicase is responsible for breaking the hydrogen bonds between complementary base pairs and because it is able to break the hydrogen bonds the, ins the strand which is within the two incisions has been completely removed. So, the excision has happened thanks to the UVRD, okay, which is nothing but a helicase molecule. Now, when it first associated with the UVRC, it was able to, due to a conformational change, just unwind a single nucleotide. But after it has unwound a single nucleotide, its helicase activity enhances and thereby it is able to remove the entire stretch of DNA. When another important fact that is there is when UVRD takes over, UVRC is released. So the affinity with which the UVRC bound to the double stranded DNA is now not there because slowly and gradually UVRD is opening up the uh, uh, it is removing the double strand. So, here what is happening is it is going to leave a gap. So, this gap is what has been observed. Therefore, the next step has to be that the gap has to be filled. This gap is filled by DNA polymerases and it is specifically in many systems the DNA Pol1 that does it. So, the DNA Pol1 using the 3 prime OH of the strand uh, synthesizes the strand that was removed and in synthesizing this strand it ensures that the correct nucleotides are being added because it has the 3 prime 5 prime exonuclease activity and can proofread and it is also not a long stretch very long stretch of DNA and therefore uh, it should be able to make less mistake however if it makes a mistake then there should be a fail safe mechanism to correct that repair uh, that mistake as well. But okay, let us consider that this DNA polymerase is able to synthesize the new DNA uh, with precision and as it closes into the UVRB, the UVRB is also removed. So thereby what is remaining is the new DNA formed from the region where there was the old DNA with the damage that has been removed. A new strand has been synthesized and now what remains is only a gap a nick that has to be sealed. So therefore, this nick is sealed by obviously the DNA ligase. So the DNA ligase will come bind at that position, add the phosphodiester bond between the two existing nucleotides 
and once that is done you have the double stranded dna again but now this double stranded dna is devoid of the damage so this is what is the step wise movement towards or the step wise um, progress towards removing the uh, adduct that was a lesion and having removed the adduct now what remains is the normal dna restoring the genomic stability so interestingly what we had said in the first uh, uh, first few slides is that uh, ner is also re uh, recruited during transcription so uh, what is observed is when rna polymerase is transcribing a dna and as it transcribes a dna if it finds an adduct so when it finds an adduct rna pol also is ensuring that it what it transcribes is correct so when it finds an adduct or a dna lesion it stops so the rna polymerase basically stalls and when it stalls it is observed that transcription repair coupled factor or mft can bind to the stalled rna polymerase and thereby the lesion because the rna polymerase is associated with the lesion these have the domains to bind to the dna so they bind to the dna the moment trcf mft binds to the dna the stalled rna polymerase is removed from the site and now with the stalled rna polymerase being removed from the site it will recruit the ner proteins which is the uvr a to b2 complex and after the uvr a to b2 complex comes and binds the remaining is as per what happens in the global genomic nucleotide excision repair so this is something that is to be noted ner thereafter takes over to remove the dna lesion so the main important part is whether it has been detected while transcription is being carried out or whether it is detected in the dna per se without any transcription and replication okay the ultimate objective of the ner is to remove the dna lesion so let us conclude the uvr a2 uvr b2 complex is the damage recognition and verification complex it still is not completely clear as to how this stump complex can specifically bind to a damage but it does so post verification of the damaged lesion uvr c which is an endonuclease can incise on both sides of the damaged nucleotide or lesion why no spurious incisions by uvr c is a question that is still being uh, studied or it has been questioned and it still needs to be studied the dna polymerase fills the gap and the dna ligase seals to complete the process the ner can be recruited at the transcriptional level as the rna polymerase stalls to allow the mft to bind which in turn removes the rna p that is the polymerase and recruits the uvr b complex to process further the repair thus this ensemble of proteins orchestrate the removal of the toxic dna lesions through a multi step process with a lot of research yet to unravel fine details of the conformational dynamics and specificity albeit its broad substrate repertoire this is also important because it is able to detect not one type of dna lesion but several different types of dna lesions thank you